Hi guys, this is Mr. Bullock. Uh, in this lesson there will be uh, randomized comparative experiments. Uh, it's one of the most important ideas that we use in statistics is everything has to be randomized. But let's take uh, board problem 28 first. Suppose you wish, you wish to compare the average height of the math teachers, uh, the math and science teachers, uh, to the average height of the English and social science teachers here at Del Campo High School, which is the most appropriate technique for gathering the needed data. Uh, to get, would you take a census? That's the entire population. Would you do a sample survey, an experiment, uh, an observational study? Or none of these methods are appropriate. Well, um, since there's, uh, I don't know, probably 12 uh, math teachers here and probably 10 science teachers here, and, and roughly the same in the English and social science, the census would probably be your best ticket. Just go collect all the data from everybody on this. Uh, experiments or sample surveys would be a a poor choice uh, when your when your census is so small as it is. So, so um, uh, it would be uh, uh, just check with each teacher. Okay, let's let's continue. Okay, so here it is: randomization and randomized comparative experiments. Okay, randomization is the use of chance to divide experimental units into groups. It's an essential ingredient for a good experimental design. Uh, so let's try some of this. Section B. Testing a breakfast food, and this is example 512 on page 295. Okay, a food company assesses the nutritional quality of a new instant breakfast produced by feeding it to newly weaned male wi uh, white rats. Uh, the response variable is the white rat's uh, weight gain over a 28-day period. A control group of rats eats a standard diet, but otherwise receives exactly the same treatment as the experimental group who's eaten the instant breakfast. Okay, so this experiment has one factor, which is the diet of the two levels. You know, one gets the, the instant breakfast and one gets the old diet that they've always gotten. The researcher uses 30 rats for the experiment and so must divide them into two groups of 15. Uh, so to do this with an unbiased fashion, because you don't want to pick, you know, all the one rats for, you know, all the males or all the females or, you know, all the whites or all the black rats or whatever. Um, uh, you, so what they, here's one way. You can put the, the cage numbers of the 30 rats in a hat and mix them up and draw, the, and draw 15. And then, and then these rats can be the experimental group and the remaining 15 rats can be the control group. That is, each group is an SRS of the available rats. Okay, so, uh, uh, so here's a, a design that, uh, that you're going to be asked to do this also. You got your uh, random assignment and your group one would be 15 rats that got treatment one with a new diet. Your group two would be uh, the standard diet. And then uh, you compare their weight at the, end of the, at the end of the day. Here's another way, you guys. Uh, back of the book with table B, we use table B quite a bit. Uh, and so we can label the rats uh, from 1 to 30. Now since 30 is a two-digit number, then 1 should be a two-digit number, 0, 1. And enter the table B, say at line 130, run your finger across this line and continue to line 131 and 132 is needed until 15 rats are chosen. And, and as you can see, when you look at uh, that table, line 130, these are the first uh, 15, uh, uh, 05, 16, 17, 20, 19, 04, and so on and so on. So, uh, so these rats uh, form the experimental group, and so the remaining 15 would be your control group. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do that. Okay, principles of experimental design. Uh, uh, one is uh, the control that it controls the effect of lurking variables uh, on the response, most simply by comparing two or more treatments. Okay, so uh, number two, it, it randomizes uh, by using impersonal chance to assign experimental units to treatments. Number three, it replicates uh, each treatment on many units to reduce chance variation in the result. Okay, our hope is, is to see or not to see a difference in the response. Sorry, that R shouldn't be right there, that guy right there, in the response so large we want to see a difference in the response so large that it is very unlikely uh, that that happened just by chance variation. For example, you guys, uh, oh, and this is called statistically significant. Uh, so, for example, like that aspirin and heart attack example we did a few days ago. Okay, it was so significant that aspirin reduced heart attacks that they, you know, they concluded that it was, uh, it, it reduced heart attacks. Okay, section D, uh, encouraging uh, energy conservation. 
And this is example 513 on page 297. So many utility companies have programs to encourage their customers to conserve energy. An electric company is considering placing electronic meters in households to show the cost, uh, to show what the cost would be if electricity uh, used at that moment continued for a month. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, will meters reduce electricity use? Would cheaper methods work almost as well? So the company decides to uh, design an experiment. Here's what they did. Uh, one cheaper approach is to give customers a chart and, info and information about the monitoring of their electrical use. The experiment compares these two approaches, either the meter or the chart, with the other uh, and also with a control group of customers who receive no help in monitoring their electricity at all. So the response variable is the total electricity used in a year. The company finds 60 single-family residents in the same city uh, willing to participate. So it assigns 20 residents at random to each of the three treatments. There's three treatments. One is meter, one is the chart, and one is no help at all. And so here's the outline uh, right here. So randomly assign. Uh, group uh, one can get the meter. Group two can get the, the chart. And then group three has uh, no, no help at all. So... Um, and then we just randomly assign. So to carry out the random assigned, uh, label the 60 houses, 0, 1 to 60. Then you can enter table B and read the two-digit groups until you have selected 20 houses to receive the meter. And then continue in table B to select 20 more to receive uh, the charts. And the remaining 20 will form the, the control group. Okay, and this process is simple, but it can be tedious. But you know, we'll just think of some simple or some faster ways later. <coughs> Uh, a completely randomized design happens when all experimental units are picked at random among all the treatments, like those that we just did in, in sections B and D. It's one of the most important ideas uh, yeah, to statistics. Okay, that's it.